afternoon and welcome. I'm Lisa Lamb and I'm one of the leaders, co-leaders of the SDSU Noise Master Teaching Fellowship Project and it is such a pleasure to see all of you here today. Um, we are just absolutely delighted to have you here and to uh, have you get the chance to hear from our fellows today. I want to start out with um, an introduction of uh, two amazing people. Uh, the Dean of the College of Education, Joe Johnson. And the Associate Dean of the College of Sciences, Kathy Atkins. And they're going to, uh, we're delighted that they're gonna be here welcoming us today. So, uh, Dr. Dean Johnson, or Kathy, either one. <laughs> Well, I want to welcome everyone here. Um, I am really excited about this. I just learned that some of you have been in this program. Most of you, I guess, have been in this program for five years, and then we've had some other cohorts come in and join. But the fact that you're helping students learn about science and math is really critical. It's critical certainly for our students who come into SDSU, but it's critical for the entire science math field. So getting our students from K to 12 prepare to come to college and do it right away, um, past the first time, uh, is, is a really nice feat. So I wanna welcome you. Thank you for participating in this program. Um, thank you for passing it on to your colleagues and for being models of this program. So much counting on you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your participation in this program. Thank you for the ways that you uh, have been pushing yourselves so that you can do a better and better and better job of making a difference for students. You know, I remember in ninth grade deciding that I didn't like science. <laughs> because, because Mr. Budge, <laughs> my science teacher, um, provided us with uh, the Earth Science textbook, and um, you know, science lesson number one, uh, read pages three to 15, answer the end of the chapter questions. No talking! <laughs> right? and, and then it just proceeded every day, and I thought that the science book, co-authored by Mr. Budge, oh. <laughs> was uh, deadly. And I just thought this was boring, had no relevance to me. And it wasn't until uh, my junior year in college where I had been putting off the required science classes. <laughs> and you know, I figured, okay, I do need to graduate, so I gotta take this stuff, right? And so I took the first uh, science course in the sequence, and I loved it. And then there was a second science course that I had to take, and I loved it. And then I didn't have to take any more, but I went ahead in my last semester of my senior year. I took a third, and I loved it. And I wanted to go and find Mr. Budge. <laughs> but you, you are changing that for so many kids. And, and so we're excited about uh, 
what you're doing, we're excited about what you've learned, we're excited about what you're going to give our students in science and mathematics. <laughs> so thank you, and best wishes to you, all of you. I uh, want to recognize another group of, um, of individuals who are here today. Um, so this is a Master Teaching Fellowship and, and we've been able to, to support, and we'll tell a little bit more in just a minute, uh, 36 Master Teaching Fellows, which is quite extraordinary from across six districts. Uh, but we couldn't do it unless administrators actually give their permission. Not only get the permission, it's, it actually means that um, teachers have to, not have to, they get the opportunity to come and learn with us. But, but that also requires a, a commitment from administrators. And so if you're an administrator, um, if you're an administrator here today, would you please stand and, and let us thank you. I mentioned I'm one of the uh, one of the leaders of the of this uh, group, and um, it's quite a group. So I, I feel so lucky to be part of them. And I just uh, when I um, announce your name, if you could just stand. Uh, so the math educator, Susan Nickerson, Dr. Susan Nickerson, <laughs> Dr. Randy Phillip from the College of Education. the science educators, Dr. Donna Ross from the College of Education. Dr. Vaughn from the College of Education. And Dr. Kathy Williams from the College of Science. Uh, we also have some am amazing um, support. And so Candace Cabral, is she, she's, she's, there she is, yes. We have some graduate students and former graduate students who worked on this project. Um, Casey Hawthorne is now Dr. Casey Hawthorne. And so he's going to be La Rochelle is about to become Dr. And Lauren Stewart will will eventually become Dr. Lauren uh, None of this would happen also. There's a lot of things that have to fall into place for this to happen, but we um, are incredibly grateful to the National Science Foundation. Uh, this is a uh, quite a project, it's quite an undertaking, but it really takes funding to be able to do this kind of work, and so we just want to publicly acknowledge uh, the National Science Foundation. We also want to especially acknowledge uh, the Qualcomm Foundation. Uh, one of the features of this project that really sets us apart is the fact that Qualcomm um, provided money, and, and having private funding for this kind of a project um, that gets partnered with uh, a public entity, so the National Science Foundation, is quite unusual. And so we really want to uh, publicly thank the Qualcomm Foundation. They donated $500,000 for this project over the past five years. Um, and that actually means that 10 of our Master Teaching Fellows um, would not have been able to participate had Qualcomm not been, been uh, a partner with us. So we really want to publicly thank Qualcomm for that. Um, we um, have a uh, plaque that we would like to give, and accepting that plaque on, on Qualcomm's behalf today is, is Dr. Kathy Atkins. Uh, again, incredible features of this project is how many partnerships are required. And so we've announced people from the College of Education and the College of Sciences. I've already mentioned that this is a public-private partnership, incredibly um, um, unique and fabulous. Uh, we have math and science teachers, which is fun. <laughs> Middle school and high school teachers. We have six districts represented. Um, both at uh, charter schools and non-charter, I'll just call them schools, other public schools. And all of those came together to really um, create this Master Teaching Fellowship. And we, we tend to refer this, uh, to this as Project Learn. 
And that's where all of you come in. You are amazing. So let's hear it for the Master Teaching Club. You are special. And uh, it was really, um, we were having conversations about all of you and how incredible you were when you started out the fellowship. Um, but, and then how much more incredible you are now. You're just amazing people. And we, we had this conversation about whether fellows, or teachers in particular, teachers are born or made. And I think um, Randy used this word, he said it's pernicious. There's this pernicious idea that teachers are born. That somehow, they're just out of the womb, some are meant to be teachers and they're brilliant at it, and others not so much. Um, but we know that that really is not the case. And so it really takes years, not just of being in the classroom, but really thinking hard about your practice and really wanting to get better. And so I, I found this quote that I thought was um, particularly uh, appropriate. Effective teachers are made over time through education, perseverance, practice, and guidance. And that's how we feel about all of you and the incredible hard work that you've done over the past several years. So we, we really uh, appreciate that. Um, I just, just quickly, um, this application process was quite rigorous and so some of you may or may not remember that from more than five years ago but it was it was quite a process so you had to be already exemplary to get in and some of you started a couple of years ago and that was also the case um, and we've been working together for five years and we now have a, an incredible group of 36 math and science master teaching fellows <coughs> Um, so this really doesn't, again, it comes with a lot of hard work. So they really had to um, commit to, and, and they uh, definitely committed to improving these already exemplary practices. So they were already great teachers when they started. But they all demonstrated this interest in becoming better. And they also emerged into teacher leaders, and that was uh, an explicit goal. Because once this project ends, we know that their learning is not going to end, but we also know that they're going to continue supporting the learning of their students, but also other teachers. And that's something that makes us, it fills us with joy and pride. Uh, and so now, uh, just to share a little bit about what the Master Teaching um, Fellows have been doing, we're going to invite Susan up to, and Randy, uh, to share a little bit about the math. My um, job is to stand behind Susan and support her. <laughs> <laughs> he means literally. So. <laughs> um, it's hard to summarize five years of work, but um, we tried in this slide. Uh, we met with mathematics teachers for 10 days a year to engage in varied activities, all under the umbrella of student thinking. Um, we delved deeply into the common core state standards with a focus on standards for mathematical practice. Uh, they analyzed and developed tasks with high cognitive demand. Fellows deepened their mathematical knowledge for teaching, and this includes understanding the mathematics at a deeper and more connected level. So for example, when teaching algebraic symbols, the teachers thought about ways that, the different ways that symbols are used in algebra. It might be to represent varying quantities as literal constants, as parameters, but also the associated ways of reasoning for um, various uses of these symbols. And this also includes understanding students' ways of reasoning, um, both correct and incorrect. Um, and teachers spent, uh, had several opportunities to interview middle and high school students. Our focus on enactment um, of ambitious teaching included learning about orchestrating productive mathematical discussions, both in whole class and in small groups, co-teaching students, analyzing student work. Part of this important work was an introduction to status theory, whereby we pay attention not just to that rich mathematical discourse that's taking place in the classroom, but also who is and is not engaged in the discourse. The focus on ambitious teaching also included thinking about ways of representing mathematical ideas that support students' sense making. Teachers examine their own practice by sharing video clips in small group and whole group settings. 
activities and leadership, which we'll talk a little bit more about, including support for presenting at national conferences, leading local professional development at their sites, peer coaching, rehearsing conversations with colleagues about effective teaching, and engaging in lesson study. In lesson study, small groups of teachers co-plan a lesson, observe, and redesign the lesson. But it's not about improving a single lesson, it's a pathway for ongoing improvement of instruction. In between the formal professional development meetings, teachers met in small groups, supported colleagues, gave presentations, and reflected on these experiences. <laughs> what, what she said. <laughs> to share about the uh, science experiences. We have Dr. Donna Ross. Hi everyone, I was here a week or so ago when we had another one and I learned I'm not good with a microphone so I'm just gonna talk. <laughs> um, Susan so eloquently talked about the things and so many of them overlap that I'm not going to repeat the things that she mentioned. I'm gonna point out a couple of differences and then tell you a couple of quick stories. Um, so of course we focus on the next generation science standards because we're science. We've done a bunch of di deep dives into some of the science and engineering practices, so we spent a lot of time on that. We did this really cool week one summer where we had kids come in and the teachers <laughs> and the teachers taught in front of one another, so they worked in pairs and the others observed and took all these notes. And then they did these debriefs and we videotaped it all and then they went back after they, they talked with other people to plan their debriefs and then they debriefed and then they debriefed some more and the whole thing was debriefing and so it was that was so much fun to watch them actually with the kids doing that um, and then another thing i wanted to mention is that this year they've been working on action research so their posters will be all about action research so we hope you'll go and talk to those and uh, talk to them as they do that but the story that i wanted to tell you was I think it was our first day with this group and we were so excited we'd done all this interviewing with them and Meredith and I and Kathy walked in and we started talking to them the teachers about what we were going to do and they said well so where are we going what's the trajectory over five years <laughs> we're like, oh okay <laughs> and, when, and we're going to do this now why is it that we're going to do that <laughs> Meredith and I were like, these teachers are going to keep us on our toes for five years and they absolutely did, and we had such a wonderful time with them. They're such a fun group. So we are sad to be leaving them, but we're so proud of them and so impressed with all they've done. And we are going to find ways to stay together. So thank you to all of you. We love you. Well, we did a lot of work apart. Um, we did also have some times to come together as a math and science group, whole group. Um, so over the last five years, and th those times were really focused to, on explicitly looking at teacher leadership. So while we recognize there are lots of ways in which teachers serve as leaders, our leadership training really focused on kind of developing and leveraging this kind of shared expertise around student thinking in terms of leadership. So in other words, our teachers, our leaders are really instructionally focused teacher leaders. So we have engaged our noise fellows in a variety of leadership activities over the years, and these included sharing their experiences their, and their expertise at conferences and leading professional development. Um, we started locally, but now many of them have worked to, to present nationally and even internationally in some cases. Our fellows have been supported in planning and rehearsing presentations and professional development settings and have leveraged student work and videos of their own classrooms in these settings. Coaching of both colleagues and student teachers, as Donna kind of mentioned, um, has been another focus of our leadership training. So we've used video clips, simulated teaching experiences and rehearsals, and fellows have used those to develop a shared expertise of how to support novice teachers in the classroom, how to support their colleagues in professional learning communities and other settings, as well as how to work with some of their more skeptical colleagues. And then finally, in this last year of the project, our teachers have had an opportunity to engage in action, action research and lesson study, and that's provided them another opportunity for the teaching fellows to branch out in their expertise and apply their own learning in new contexts, as well as develop new skills for working with each other. So our, really, our hope now is that our new fellows will continue to take on more leadership roles within our community, although they've taken, taken on a lot of leadership roles in the last few years. <laughs> new and different ones, right? That their expertise is gonna to continue to be leveraged 
but that they also continue to teach in the classroom too. <laughs> Thank you. So did I mention the fellows are special? <laughs> um, and I'm a math educator, so I'm all about the numbers. So uh, just a few here. So in addition to the fact that um, these folks are amazing at the uh, in their classrooms, they and I think I these are uh, actually low balls. So I think these are actually uh, low estimates here. They presented more than 60 times um, at local, state, and national conferences. They've led more than 90 professional development opportunities for teachers. We have snatched them up at San Diego State, and they've taught more than 10 courses at, the, at, at San Diego State, which we're just so pleased about. And they've served as guide teachers for more than 150 of our student teachers. So we're, we've, um, we're trying something interesting. So um, we've, we've asked each master teaching fellow to share one way, just one, that they've supported other teachers or that they've grown in their teaching practice. We have not rehearsed this, so we're gonna see how it goes. So they're gonna be standing and um, I won't be announcing, they're just gonna be standing up in what we're calling popcorn style. So pay close attention. They're just gonna um, stand when it's their turn. Did everybody find the person that you're following? <laughs> All right, Angie, you ready to kick us off? All right. I'm Angie Hackman, and importantly, my teaching focus has changed to student thinking and NGSS. I'm Ben Chan, and I learned about lesson study and saw the power of reflecting with other colleagues and, and thinking about student and their amazing thinking. I'm Brenda Mueller, and because of noise, I've been able to present at local, state, and national conferences. I'm Kara Hedrick, and in the last four years, I've overseen 11 induction um, uh, <coughs> teachers, and I've uh, supported six um, student teachers. I'm Christina Reed. I've served as department chair and used my noise experience to help my colleagues. I'm Colleen cook -Sallis. I became lots more reflective and was able to share that uh, skill and spread that to my uh, student teachers and uh, the other teachers of my department. And I'm Colleen Robinson and implementing um, professional listening <laughs> uh, has really impacted my students, my colleagues, and myself pretty powerfully. I'm Crystal Howe and I have been able to write for the California Next Generation Science, Science Rollouts for the last three years. Uh, my name is Dave Tupper and because of noise and the people here, I'm now teaching secondary science methods here at the university. I'm Sarah Lorosco and I have learned how to support uh, my PLC at my site and create um, engaging lessons for students. I'm James Whelan, and I helped plan and develop uh, professional developments around student thinking. I'm James Zell, and I've served as a guide teacher for nine San Diego State University student teachers. I'm Jeff Bonine, and I had the opportunity to teach a class here to the teacher education program for aspiring educators. I'm Jeff Rapp, and I've been able to present at some of the NGS rollouts that Crystal helps write. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jennifer Ogo, and I have designed and implemented NGSS trainings for teachers at my school. I'm Jennifer Mazzella, and I served as a guide teacher and use what I learned here to help support them. I'm Jeremiah Potter, I teach an early field work and science education course here at the city. I'm Jesse Wade Robinson, and I presented at the National Science Teacher Association. My name is Joe Garland. I just finished my third year of co-teaching the secondary math methods class here at San Diego State. My name is Carrie Cook, and I lead and develop PD for my school district. And of course, I am a guide teacher for a bunch of student teachers. <laughs> Almost forgot my spot. Sorry. <laughs> I'm Kate Tallman, and I've been helping my department learn to use uh, discourse to help them increase their collaboration to deepen student understanding and to promote equity in our classrooms. 
Kirsten Schmidt and through the support of all these people in this program, I became confident enough to become restructuring chair, leading school-wide change and uh, creating teacher-led professional development. Lee Eppies, and thanks to Noyce, I'm able to comfortably go back to my site and help my fellow cohort implement NGSS as well. My name is Linnell Wiley, and I'm a teacher on special assignment at my school, leading school-wide professional development. I've also presented at a couple of local uh, conferences. I'm Lula Sanchez, and thanks to Noyce, I've been able to develop um, debate in the math classroom, and I've also been able to work with the math and science teachers through the assembly coming in the STEM program as a staff developer. Thank you. My name is Pat Keys, and through Noise, I was able to serve as guide teacher and present at uh, conferences, including CMC My name is Rachel Poland, and I have presented at local, state, and national conferences, science conferences. Hello, I'm Rachel Meisner, and I've been teaching elementary science methods here at San Diego State over the past five years. Hi, my name is Ron Choi. I implement what I've learned into my classroom practice and I should open my door for other colleagues to observe. I'm Sarah Pachera and I've been able to bring ideas from noise to my PLC, including uh, designing and implementing three-dimensional NGSS assessments at my school. I'm Shauna Jagai and I have um, led next generation science standards professional developments across the state and several other states and in China. <laughs> See, Diala Perry, and I gained confidence to, uh, to be a guide teacher for the last two years. <laughs> My name is Stephanie Nguyen, and I've been able to be a guide teacher and also um, uh, head of the math department at my school. My name is Tom Nusser. I've helped our site uh, better implement the science and engineering practices and presented a number of like, science and engineering conferences. Hi, I'm Tony Sandoval, and I've led um, professional development and lesson studies uh, with elementary and middle school teachers in my district. Well, Stewart, I got to lead uh, professional noticing, professional, uh, professional development with the male at our school site, and next fall I'll be teaching the secondary math methods course here. Give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have, um, uh, if you happen to come to the one other reception that we've hosted, we had a video and we won't disappoint this time. <laughs> we're gonna have another one. Uh, it was very well received. And so we're gonna try it. I hope that the volume is okay. That was a little, I'm gonna try to adjust the volume as we go. All right, everybody ready? Okay. teachers who do everything they're supposed to do, never complain, and they like give them a hundred percent. It is hard to find. So for me, I don't think that there has been one particular moment or experience. I think it's the collaboration of everything that we've done, all of the small moments where we have worked together, learned together, laughed together, and just tried to become better teachers and better at our profession. My most memorable experience in noise were the observations that we did in classrooms where we were given a chance to sit and really look at a group of students for an entire period. And we never get that as teachers. Uh, my most memorable experience with noise is the happy hour in my backyard where teachers were screaming at wine glasses to try to make them break after learning a sound phenomena. I feel like I've just learned so much about the process of how you become a really good teacher and how that focus on student thinking can really change and shape the way that you plan and instruct in your class. 
I have learned that being a good teacher is not something that is magic, it's hard work. And I have learned that the learning doesn't stop. I have learned a ton of corny jokes from Randy Phillip about math. I've learned to uh, listen to my students differently. I've learned to interact with other teachers differently. I um, the, the more you dive into understanding student thinking, the more exciting teaching becomes. I really like the lesson study process and being able to collaborate with my peers. I think for sure I'm going to take the personal and professional relationships that have been built over the last five years, I think. I think that this work is hard. I think that's an understanding piece and that it only gets better together. Um, I'll take all the information I've learned and expand it out in my sphere of influence at my school site, at other school sites, and to as many people who will listen. What has been oh, your most... Right. <laughs> Ready? <Yeah. laughs> okay, cut off that second part. Okay. Yeah, it was really good. Oh shoot, can we redo that? Video. So, um, and, uh, and, and that is another thing that wouldn't be possible without one other person in this room, and that's Candace Cabral. She uh, created this video. <laughs> but that's a small piece of what she does. She, did, she does take care of all of our technology needs and everything else, but I walk into her office every day and she, I, I'm surprised she hasn't slammed the door and just said, no, I'm never going to talk to you again. But she really, <laughs> she makes this project better and she supports every single one of us in here. And so I just want to offer a special thanks to Candy and come on up. So this is the portion of the, of the reception poster session where you actually get to learn about all of the amazing things, well some of the amazing things that the Master Teaching Fellows have been doing for the past several years. And so um, this is just a reminder for our Master Teaching Fellows. So what we're going to do right now is all of you are going to disperse to your posters. Some of you are going to have, there, there could be one or two posters at, at these tables. So we may set them, you'll, you'll know if you're doing that, you're gonna set up your poster. Um, so all of you will be doing that for 15 minutes. And then Group A, and you know you should know who you are by the label on your poster. Group A will stay for the second 15 minutes. You'll stay at your poster so that Group B can, the, the, just as an aside, the Master Teaching Fellows haven't seen each other's posters. So, so Group B will get to walk around and see the Group A posters. And then in the third 15 minute round, Group B will stand at their posters and Group A gets a chance to walk around. It's that time, so please head to your posters. And thank you all again for coming. Oh, thank you.